Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today is day five, maybe six. Last night was a late night. As you can see on my face, I was up till one in the morning, getting a bunch of tedious things done. My parents finally bit the bullet and did a full solar inverter lithium rewiring package on their Grand Design Imagine travel trailer. One of the biggest questions that I get on my YouTube channel is, can you do a full walkthrough or explain how you installed your uh, electrical system on your pop-up camper. There is wires everywhere in that pop-up camper um, and it makes it very complicated to do that video. So let's dive into my parents' electrical system. The first thing that we did is we removed the lead acid batteries on the tongue of the camper and moved everything inside underneath their bed. Now my parents went with Litime lithium batteries. Litime is becoming very reliable within the industry. It's got a five-year warranty and you can't beat their price. My parents went with 600 amp hours of lithium batteries. Back when I installed my system in 2019, there wasn't a whole lot of lithium competition in the marketplace. I went with Battleborn batteries because they kind of made a name for themselves back in the day, but they were $900 a piece. I don't regret my decision going with them because they have a 10 year warranty. If I do it all over again, I think I'm gonna go with light time, especially if I get a good three or four years of test time on my parents' rig. When I get an upgraded camper, this is what I'm gonna go with. Yes, I went with Victron components. I've been using them for three or four years. Everything works really well within the app and talks with one component to the other. Yes, they're expensive, but you kind of get what you pay for. Coming off the battery, everything goes into the Lynx distributor. This is just a glorified bus bar. In my system, in my pop-up, I literally have wires going from fuses, going to the bus bar, going to another shutoff. This is all housed in one system. There is four mega fuse slots. I'll walk through how we have it set up in my parents camper on the first slot we have a fuse going to the dc to dc charger the orion dc to dc charger is basically a 30 amp charger while you're driving down the road it's kind of a aka backup generator if you saw my colorado video i use this quite a bit up in the mountains because we were in overcast and rainy days the next fuse in the Lynx distributor fuses the 3000 watt multi plus inverter charger the next slot goes to the uh, MPPT Victron 7515 solar charge controller. My parents opted to not go with any solar on the roof. They're gonna do one 200 watt solar panel that's portable from Rich Solar, and that charge controller is for that. So the last fuse on the Lynx distributor is for the 12 volt system on the camper. We wired into the original OEM um, black and red wires off the chassis. I also installed a new fuse block from Blue Sea, and that is for all the new uh, 12 volt upgrades, electrical system things that we're gonna get into. I'm gonna walk you through each thing we did. Now, one of the things you have to do when wiring in a multi-plus inverter charger, you have to take the shore power coming from the plug, from the pedestal, and you have to wire that directly to the multi-plus first before you come back to your sub panel. And Nate from Explorers Life uh, came up with this new junction box that makes it extremely easy to do. And that white thing back there is the junction box. And all we had to do was take this orange wire, pull up as much as we can from underneath the camper, cut it. From there, you take our new wires. We ran two new 10-3 wires. And you basically have the orange wire coming in from shore power splicing it in with one of the white legs going all the way back to the bed where the inverter charger is. And then you have the second white run coming back, which is actually spliced into this orange, which goes to your distribution panel. Now, one of the things you have to do is you need to, my mom already labeled it, is you have to turn the converter off to kind of get rid of that loop cycle of excess power. Otherwise, you're gonna have a loop cycle where your batteries will be charging themselves from their own power, uh, kind of redundant. So either turn it off or remove the converter charger. What else are we missing? Now, when you wanna use the inverter, you can come in and lift up the bed Put your hand down in here where the inverter is and turn on the inverter. And when you're done with it, you can turn it off. My parents opted to go with something a little bit easier. And we installed this little toggle switch underneath this little trash can area. And you just have to reach down in there and turn the inverter on or turn it off. It makes it really convenient. And you don't have to open up the bed each and every time you want to run the microwave to make popcorn while camping. So right off the bat, one of the things that we did is we added a uh, LED light strip 
Um, this is going to make it convenient when you come in here to troubleshooting thing. Also too, the next thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to build two cargo uh, drawers or tubs that are going to sit on top of this electrical system so they can put like cokes and waters and whatnot um, in here underneath their bed. We also added two six inch USB fans that I hardwired into the 12 volt system. These have a thermometer so when it gets above 88 degrees or 92, whatever you set it at, the fans kick on. I've got this one to my right is pulling in air and the one to the left which is right above the inverter which gets hot. That one pulls the air out of the cargo area. I also installed some 12 volt sockets. I've got one underneath the bed and I have another one that is in the cargo area coming down underneath the camper. And this is for their 12 volt cooler in case they wanna keep the cooler outside and get drinks, they can plug it on the bottom of the camper. That's what I did. It makes it convenient for having drinks and stuff. And you get to avoid having to go in the camper to get a drink. Probably the only request I had from my mom was an additional USB-C and USB port. I put one on her bedside and I also put one on my dad's side. Uh, just some additional uh, charging ports. Can't go wrong with those. I also installed one of these motion uh, LED light detectors. I just recently installed one in my camper to cover up a mistake that I made. So I had an extra one laying around and so I installed one on their camper so when they get up in the middle of the night, it'll come on and they can use the bathroom. I also installed a on off switch. That way if it's on at night and it's bothered them, they can actually turn it off. So my parents upgraded their mattress and it's pretty heavy. It's actually a hybrid mattress uh, for your house, not an RV mattress. So when the mattress is on here, it actually pushes down quite a bit. And so they've had this makeshift piece of uh, wood for the last three or four years. So I've made this, this will come out and it will uh, bind against right here to keep the mattress up when they want to get into their storage. And when they're done with it, throw it back there and the magnet catches it. Here's the carpet tile that I just got done installing. And I installed this to help avoid tearing up the bottom of their mattress when they open and close their cargo space. Hopefully that will work out. This is how I've been laying for the last five days in this cargo bay. I had a couple LED strips laying around, so I added two LED strips in the cargo bay with that switch. This is where we put the ground. Went ahead and ground it right to the aluminum chassis that is connected to the metal frame. Over here is the water bay. We removed the storage area and um, I'm gonna have to build that back here today. But this is the whole access to the cargo where we ran all the wires. And down here is where we drilled two inch and a half inch holes and we ran the 110 uh, wire for the shore power and also where we ran the uh, DC to DC charger going to the front of the camper. God, I can't wait to finally get out of this place. I used wire loom to protect the cables from the DC to DC charger. Uh, also the 12 volt that goes to the chassis uh, for the original OEM that goes back to the OEM uh, distribution panel. Right here you see this wire right there. That is the 110 volt 10-3 uh, uh, flex core um, that goes back to the 30 amp shore power and that goes straight from the shore power all the way to right here which is the uh, multi plus and then it goes back like I talked about earlier. This is where we chose to run the Anderson connection for the portable solar panel and all this is doing is going up and over this piece of plywood that's going up behind the water bay going in the access hole that goes into the under bed storage cargo area where all our electrical system is. And to wire this up, I made him a 30 foot uh, cable right there. That's 10 gauge uh, wire that's pretty pliable. Um, it's not this heavy, thick, stiff stuff. So it's pretty cool, especially in cooler weather. But he's got a water bay access, runs us down there, connects it, throw up his portable panel, off to the races. No more generator. That, that's where this all started. I got tired of camping with him and listening to the generator. My parents bought me this little uh, glider thing from uh, Harbor Freight. Best $39 that you could ever buy. If you're gonna do a system like this, buy one of these rolling carts because you're underneath the camper, quite a bit running wire. One of the things we did is at night um, when you're camping, you kind of want to turn off all your lights and just have little ambience lights. And for my parents more in particular, they wanted to be able to see their stairs they are getting old. They can't see and they trip over stuff all the time. And so I installed one of these uh, KC LED lights. I have a switch inside that you can turn it off and on. My driveway is on an incline. So you just 
lift your feet up and you go down. Oh, in all seriousness though, that thing was worth $39. So underneath my parents' truck is this uh, Anderson uh, 40 amp connection and we ran the wire both positive and negative to the battery. And this is what charges their lithium batteries while driving about 25 to 30 amps an hour. Oh, I deserve that. Six days of this. Back hurts, so I'm walking like this. My back hurts, get too old for this shit, boy. I'm looking forward to doing a system of my own down the road. I am looking at getting a new camper in the next three or four years, and I will be putting in a massive system because I want to run the AC when we go to Colorado in August. Hopefully you like this video of a quick brief overview of their electrical system. If you liked it, smash the like button and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.